Hello, beautiful spiritual beings. My name is Mira Uniat, and today I am recording the introductory episode for my new podcast called Spiritualize. The goal of this podcast is basically to provide resources and materials for people who are on their spiritual path and trying to reconnect with their inner self and understand themselves and learn their true nature. How I feel the world today is that planet Earth is going through a very uh, big transformation and humanity has to learn to adjust and adapt to these changes because the types of um, energy vibrations that planet Earth is right now in, you know, are stimulating completely different um, feelings and thoughts and emotions in human beings. And a lot of human beings are not equipped enough to embrace that new energy and live with it and uh, evolve together with planet Earth to basically fourth dimension. Um, I don't expect you to understand what is meant by fourth dimension because it's so much related to how you feel yourself, how you feel everything around you, what kind of energy is being sent to your body, how your body reacts. You know, I don't expect you to intellectually understand it because you can only feel it through your own inner experience and that's something that I started feeling after you know a certain situations in my life where my consciousness shifts and you know I don't like to give it names you know some people call it enlightenment some people call it spiritual awakening you know, like there are a few other names to it, but, you know, for myself, it was just a big shift in how I perceive life. It was as if the mirror turned upside down and, uh, you know, I started seeing people and circumstances in completely different lights and uh, started seeing different meanings, you know, I would say completely opposite meanings to those that were giving to people and circumstances before this spiritual experience. How I feel right now, you know, what's being sent to me um, from higher self and from, um, you know, higher energies is that Humanity will go through um, an interesting stage, and I don't like to call it good or bad, positive or negative. It's going to be just a lot of changes happening. And in order, you know, those changes will come, you know, the example of those changes can even be current pandemic that we are going through and, you know, circumstances that it creates and new types of relationships people have to develop with themselves and people around them and, you know, how we have to learn to, um, you know, live in a different way. Um, you know, we right now, for example, if we feel down, we, have, we feel negative emotions, we can't just go to the bar, you know, we can't just have a glass of wine, we can't just socialize how we did it before. So all those automatic defenses that our mind got used to uh, use all the time, you know, right now they are not the same and we have to uh, basically learn how to cope with that uh, without those automatic defense. And that actually stimulates completely different uh, thought processes. And I feel like a lot of people in the coming years and in the coming decades and centuries will go through a shift in their mindset and um, awakening, uh, so to say, of their spirit and uh, they will evolve to a higher level of consciousness. 
So the transition basically that of consciousness type uh, will happen from third dimension to fourth dimension. So the third dimension is basically how I understand it is on the level of um, um, of the yellow chakra chakra or you know the chakra of identifying yourself and how you belong to different social groups and what those social groups look like in your uh, consciousness and um, in your beliefs and how you um, use your um, inner power to um, you know, to, to live in a society and how you see that society and certain social groups you are in. Um, so that is a, a something that needs to evolve to the level of fourth or green chakra, which is on the level of um, heart and the level of love, um, unconditional love and ability to learn to love everything and everybody around you so it's a level of universal love so to say that will help you to um, evolve to understanding that anything any situation any person that being sent to your life is there sent to you for a reason and you no longer have to convince yourself to love that situation, to love that person. That feeling of love will have to become natural and automatic, so to say. So that is how I understand, you know, this universal love where you have the capability to truly, naturally feel the love within to anything and anybody. There is no longer resistance to what it is. There is no resistance to certain people and what they say. You are embracing everything. It's as if you can read every person and sense the energy that's being transformed in certain words. You know, like you can basically read the person and if the person is saying something, you know, that triggers you it just means that that person is feeling something uh, you know something negative you know if that person's angry there are certain words that are being used there are certain communication techniques that are being used and when you start understanding that that person is actually suffering you won't get mad at them right so you start reading every circumstance and every situation in a completely different way this is something that on, you know, right now, majority of people on the planet are not able to naturally feel in situations when they are being triggered. So in a nutshell, this podcast, Spiritualize, will help you to evolve to the next level of consciousness, to the next level of experiencing life and understanding your true nature and, um, you know, I will be sharing with you my own experience that I'm going through because, like I said, I uh, have been f feeling a big shift in my own consciousness. And it started happening to me, I'd say, uh, in summer 2020. And I would say that that's when I uh, started, you know, from um, the work that I've done in psychology realm and trying to understand my own self and my own self-defense mechanisms that's being developed throughout the years and that I used automatically, you know, as soon as I started feeling the same states that I didn't enjoy, emotional states that I didn't enjoy, I developed exactly the same defense mechanisms to cope with them. And those defense mechanisms were like extensive workouts, like my um a lot of um you know career work and focusing on my career and basically continuing to build those rigid walls of what i thought i was um you know how i 
um, who I think I was and how the society should treat me. And, you know, those rigid walls really require a lot of life energy for me to sustain. And, um, you know, I would say that for me, the biggest transformation started happening where when I met someone who triggered love and someone who basically was a mirror of myself, you know, a mirror of my own mental structure. And I started seeing myself in that person. And, you know, that's why I was attracted to him. That's why I, you know, really saw a lot of potential in, in that connection. And, uh, you know, it was as if I met myself, um, you know, and that like, but in a male body, right? So so that triggered that process. And I started learning about myself because, you know, if um, two rigid mental structures are met, you know, the and there is no um, fluidity or there is no flexibility in those mental structures, you know, the only thing that will happen in uh, that connection is um, crash, right? So that's why I started working and learning about my um, mental uh, construct and who basically my um, understanding of who I am and, and trying to develop that flexibility and embracing more and more and expanding those boundaries that I had. And, you know, I basically... Uh, reconciled my childhood trauma from this life, uh, from my current life. And, um, you know, I remembered all the states since my childhood that I went through, all the states where I felt unloved, where I felt hurt, where I felt abandoned. You know, I, I wrote a letter to my inner self. So that was the beginning of that journey where I started reconciling on the, all that pain and digging deeper and deeper and deeper. And, um, you know, one night at 9 p.m., I just, you know, decided to open up my heart and, um, you know, just drive to Vancouver and tell that person that I love him. You know, I did something that was completely not natural for that person that lived in my body at that time. You know, for all the years being, uh, thinking that I'm strong, think, thinking that I am independent and uh, that I can do everything myself, you know, I expected people to treat me a certain ways. And if they didn't, I basically just uh, moved on. And, um, you know, I continued the same cycle, the same um, karma <laughs> repeating and, uh, and collecting it throughout years. And this is was the first time where I did something that was completely different um, and uh, something that triggered a process in my consciousness um, in, you know, completely opposite way. I would say that that was the beginning of um, my spiritual awakening. And, um, you know, I went to British Columbia, I went to, and lived there in, in my car for almost a month. So I reconnected with nature, you know, I traveled by car to all the beautiful spots and waterfalls and mountains. And, um, you know, I uh, first I, I, I went to see that uh, person and then told him that, I love you and I did not expect to hear anything in return because that's where I was already understanding that true love, like how, where it's coming from your heart, where it's coming from your true self, true self, which is your, uh, you know, the deeper self. And I, uh, some people call it soul, you know, and I can call it soul as well. I would say that that's actually the closest word which you can use to call something that is beyond physicality. So for me, you know, that was the beginning of me acting from my deeper and higher self, not from my ego construct, not from that automatically created throughout years 
mental structure that lived within me, but from something deeper within that was triggered by a true unconditional love. You know, your soul doesn't need to hear that, you know, that somebody loves you in return. If you tell someone, actually even to love someone, you don't even need to tell that to the person. You don't even need to, um, you know, do um, uh, obligatory actions or, you know, like certain society expected things to show that you approve, that you love that person. So true love can be very quiet. You know, it's exactly, it's how you feel, you know, it's what you exude, it's what you're blossoming with, it's yours, it's, um, you know, when every flower is blossoming, there is certain, um, ero like, aromatic um, waves being exuded, right? So this is the smell that you can share, you know, the smell, beautiful smell and um, smell of love, I would say. So that's my, you know, the beginning of my spiritual journey where I started understanding that when I say someone, uh, when I say that I love to someone, um, you know, it's so important for you to get rid of that fear that that person won't tell it to you in return because your soul doesn't need to hear anything, you know, your soul is quiet. Your soul is just feeling it. Your soul is just lights up that feeling within and that's what you are sharing, you know? So that triggered in me a lot of... Um, a lot of light that's being, uh, you know, shining and um, lighting up so many dark areas within that I had no idea existed. So I started feeling like the more you give to the world, you actually getting even more in return in the most unexpected ways, you know. So I, I would go out and feed homeless people, you know. I any uh, when I would walk on the street and I see somebody, you know, I saw a um, dad who was walking, uh, his son who was in a wheelchair, you know, I, I started talking to them and they shared their life story. And it was as if I was not talking to that person. I was communicating uh, wordlessly with um, their soul, with their spirit within. And you know, I felt what they felt. So when you feel somebody the same way how you feel yourself, would you treat them with love or you would harm them? If you feel everything around you how you feel yourself, wouldn't you want to love everything how you love yourself? So I started realizing a lot of things and um, uh, basically... Fear was something that uh, was disappearing, you know. Everybody was asking, weren't you afraid to sleep in your car at night and in the middle of nowhere? I was like, what I should be fearful of? What is the worst thing that can happen? There is nothing to lose and nothing to gain because everything is being reconciled when our soul leaves physical this physical plane, you know, which is our body. If you feel something eternal within you, if you feel that you are not your body, that your body is not you, it is yours, but it's not you. Something that is yours cannot be you. You know, if you start feeling something eternal within, you know, that the death as how most people perceive it, you know, it's not something that you should be fearful of, you know. It's something when it happens in time, it's um, actually something great because it's something that keeps life fresh, you know. And I just had so many um, past life regression meditations and um, ability to remember my past life. And maybe one day I'll record a podcast on an episode on my past life regression and, you know, how I was able to tap into 
that and um, understanding my life purpose and why I came into this, uh, you know, world and why I um, incarnated and what's my life mission for this particular life. So once I was able to um, remember that and remember um, my uh, past life and who I was, you know, I basically was able to understand what I am here for. And um, I'm here for um, sharing with people that love can unblock a lot of potential uh, that's being hidden within right now, within a lot of people, you know, and, and the best way to test that and to feel that is actually to um, do some inner work. You know, it's not something that the doctor can tell you, a psychiatrist can tell you. It's not something that somebody will tell you, hey, you need to work on this, on that. It's actually something that you can only feel. You know, when you sit down and stop doing all your regular routine and you start thinking, you know, how you truly feel right now. If majority of your emotions right now are lower than the vibrations of peace, because even peace is there is a certain energy vibration in peace. So if your energy vibration is in the realm of, you know, anxiety, stress, fear, anger, resistance, sadness, grief, you know, there are lots of lots of those negative vibrations that are uh, lower than the energy vibrations of your soul, you know, that is actually the, um, uh, the indicator that you, the way you perceive life, the way you perceive world is a bit distorted. And those distortions and your own lens, the way that, that you use to look at life, they are not working in your favor. And there is something hidden within that is looking forward to be transformed and to be evolved. So that is the, um, you know, in brief, the description uh, of, um, you know, what this podcast will be about and what I will try to, um, you know, what kind of information I'll be sharing here. You know, the spiritual journey that I've been on has been fantastic, has been amazing. And I just feel like a lot of people will be going through similar experiences in um, the next decade and the next, you know, um, years. And, uh, you know, for me, the I would say the culmination or the peak of this um, experience that happened in my spiritual awakening was in October. And I, at that time I was um, in Ukraine where, um, you know, I decided to go... Um, even during pandemic, I just felt like my spirit is calling me and wants to go there where I grew up and uh, where I faced all those um, external, <laughs> you know, triggers, you know, the house where I grew up, my dad, like my family, everybody. So I just wanted to be triggered by every single thing that shaped me in who my old self was. So that was something that, uh, you know, intuitively I started feeling and just I just made that decision that, yes, I have to go to Ukraine. So and in October, you know, when this all happened, it's like as if you are dancing together with in a cosmic dance and it's all uh, with the cosmic flow of energy. And uh, it's also related into the earth cycles, into moon cycles. And, um, you know, if um, the spiritual awakening is happening, um, a lot of enlightened beings experienced it during full moon. So it actually happened, the same thing happened to me um, in, uh, in the end of October, uh, you know, that where basically I realized all the um, illusions that was uh, created by my mind and during all this 32 years that I've been on uh, in this physical body, you know, and um, that was the death of my old self. 
you know, and uh, I started understanding that the old self was not serving me anymore. Um, I think that uh, a lot of people experiencing that, it would be nice for those people to have someone who could share their experience of awakening with them because I remember for myself, I couldn't understand what was happening with me, you know, where you basically understand that you are, when you are merging with uh, cosmic energy and you start understanding that you are part of something bigger, that you are not something that's being squeezed into the box called this physical body and your mental construct, you know, when all of that illusion is dissolved, it's like you don't know who you are and where you are. And it's a, it's a, it was a very, to some extent, even um, scary feeling because at that moment, it's basically your old, your ego was is dying, right? And the job of the ego is to survive and to protect its boundaries no matter what. So it started creating all these weird feelings of fear and, and you know, but I would say because you're joining um, higher consciousness, you're joining the cosmic intelligence you you're joining cosmic dance you are being guided by by um i don't know how to explain it in words but you're being guided by higher powers and uh you know for me i would say it lasted uh, a few days where i couldn't understand what was happening with me and who i was and where i was and you know and the whole experience was just so weird. So it takes time for the new self within this body to be formed and for you to understand why your soul chose to incarnate in this uh, life and what you're here for. So just because for me that experience was a bit scary and it was a bit unusual, I feel like there is a big need for you know, light workers or people who could guide, um, uh, who could guide, uh, you know, those who are experiencing similar, um, you know, uh, similar situations and old self disillusion, because this is exactly what happened to me. You know, when your old self dissolves, you no longer know who you are. And in that transition, that transitionary time where, you are lost. <laughs> you are basically lost. Um, you know, time and space doesn't exist. You understand that time and space, it's also an illusion of your mental body, of how you perceive life. Um, you know, you just turning into an eternal being that's uh, being, um, you know, experiencing this human shape. Anyways, it just a lot of things can be mentioned and uh, a lot of um, unusual experiences that I went through. And, you know, a lot of people started noticing that I, <laughs> I changed, but I didn't change it. Um, I, it just happened, you know. I didn't change it because somebody asked me. That's the thing about spirituality and spiritual path is that these transformations just happen because it's cup it's coming from within it's coming from that depth of understanding and realizing that you are not some somebody that's been squeezed in this little box called physical body you are an eternal being you are an eternal being that can choose what you will be blossoming into you can choose what you're gonna burn your life energy and you know squeeze into this time lifespan you know you will choose you can choose what you're gonna blossom into during this lifetime and once you start feeling your inner self and you start feeling your soul and remembering why you came here you just look at life in a completely different light. So this is my brief story and this is 
my experience that I went through, experience of spiritual awakening and what uh, feelings I had during it. It, uh, um, you know, obviously since since then, since it happened to me in October, I just um, never was the same. No matter what was happening with me, no matter, you know, even um, in, in December, I got a really bad knee injury. They actually... Anything that was happening with my body, including that injury, it was just escalating the spiritual um, growth further. And, you know, I, it's as if you are diving into a boundless, into a boundless ocean of consciousness and you don't see the end. It's, it's just infinite, infinite intelligence and infinite ocean of consciousness that you are trying to grasp um it's it's miraculous so i'm hoping that this podcast will be useful for uh people who are on their spiritual path and trying to really learn their true nature because at the end of the day that's all what our you know life purpose is you know, do you really think that our life goal is to come here, eat, you know, drink, reproduce, make some money and die? Do you really think that that's what you're, what you're looking for? Do you really think that the creator is, is um, you know, intelligent to that level that he would give you like this purpose? Well, in fact, you are the creator. It just you haven't awakened to that feeling that you are a creator. So, but like if you look at your life, do you really think that those are the purposes you came here for? Like there is something more than that. There is something more than just, you know, survival aspects of life. And that's why it's just, I feel like every human being, every Every soul, you know, came here for a reason. We are going through experiences that are supposed to awaken our spirit within, that are supposed to awaken that power of a creator within, that are supposed to show us that we are the creator. And, you know, if we are focusing too much on just survival aspects of life, it's just hard to achieve that. So... I know for sure that circumstances and planet Earth and, you know, what happening, what happening on a global scale will be triggering a lot of spiritual awakenings in, in people. And hence why I, I hope that this podcast will be a good, helpful resources, resource for, for people who are awakening to their true nature. Thank you so much for listening. And I hope that this was helpful for you to, you know, to um, trigger some uh, seeking instinct in you. And um, in uh, uh, in the future, I will be sharing with you my new realizations and new things that I uncover in in my understanding about the miracle of this universe, the miracle of our nature. And I'll be sharing with you um, those insights here, as well as I will try to find interesting um, people who could share stories on their spiritual awakening, on their um, insights that they gain uh, in their spiritual path. And, and this way, you know, you will feel that you are not alone and <laughs> other people are experiencing similar processes and other pe people are also seeking exactly the same, which is who you truly are and what your true nature is. Thank you, beautiful spiritual beings, and I wish you lots of light, lots of love, and success in understanding who you are. Bye.